Pushing right through the month of November, praise God for that. It gets dark too early. I'm still not used to it. It takes me a week and a half, two yeah. weeks, whatever. But uh, thank the Lord. Uh, feels good out there, don't it? Amen. Amen. I think we'll get two days of 78 degree weather, and then we're going to go right down to 50. And mm -hmm. I'll take the 50. You can keep the 78. Amen. Amen. We'll meet you with the change. But praise the Lord. Well, let's do this. Let's stand together, and we'll open in a word of prayer. And then if you'll just remain standing right after prayer, uh, Christopher will come and lead us in a couple of congregational Amen. songs at that time, and then we'll go forward in the service. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank You for this day. Thank You for Your blessings. Yeah. Thank You, Lord, for the precious fellowship that we have enjoyed over these last several days. Uh, and, uh, Lord, we thank you for the just the time that we've had around your house, gathered around your word, the preaching of your word, Amen. the wonderful music, just everything, Lord, has been delightful uh, to us. And I pray, and I do believe that it has been to you, but God, our desire, more than anything, is that you be well pleased with what we do. And, Lord, I pray that tonight would be no different, that, God, you would be well pleased with the, yeah. the service, with everything that we do. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment, God. I pray you touch the man of God when he preaches tonight. I pray you bless those that sing. Bless the congregational songs tonight, I pray. And then, of course, Lord, of course, Lord, we want to pray already in advance that you would grant traveling mercies tomorrow uh, as everyone travels to the next destination for them. I pray you keep them safe on the road. Give them good traveling mercies. I do pray, Lord, again for Miss Shelley tonight. Yes. Uh, we miss her, and I know that she misses being here. And God, I pray for her that you touch her body. Uh, and God, it's no 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 time to no no time is pleasant to be under the physical attack of the infirmities of the flesh. But God, especially when you're on the road, not in your own home, not able to have your own comforts, I just pray for a touch of grace upon her tonight. Uh, God, they got a long traveling road to go down over this next week. A lot of events taking place, even with the wedding of their dear precious son and God, the emotion. Just a lot that's going to be drained from them physically as well as emotionally. And I, I know that she needs that strength. And I pray you'd help her, God, in this hour of need. I pray, dear God, you'd go love on her while we're down here loving on you. And I pray, dear God, tonight you'd accept our worship. May it be well-pleasing in the sight of Almighty God. I pray, dear God, tonight that you would touch everything that we do. And God, grant us the grace to do that which will be pleasing. Well, we ask you these things in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Take your songbooks and turn to page number 139. Page 139 at chapter.
222. Page 222, <coughs> Sunshine in the Soul. Amen. Amen. Away, all I'm telling you, what that sunlight will do something for you, yep. man. Amen. And uh, we're not just talking about the S U N, we're talking about the S O N, yep. man. Sunshine, hallelujah, amen. amen. Well, thank God, it's so is good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, amen. This time, we're going to take our Sunday night tithes and offerings. Maybe you robbed God this morning and you need to get it right, that'd be a good thing, amen. Maybe you just want to be a blessing to, to the Lord, amen. amen. And just tell Him how much you love Him, whatever the case is. We want to make sure everybody has an opportunity. You know our giving is part of our worship. Sure Did you know that? Is. You're limited in your worship if you don't allow God to just yep. touch you. Amen. And I'll tell you what I learned a long, long time ago. You'll never outgive the Lord. Amen. Yep. Isn't that Amen. good? And of course, I'll give you the report again from last Sunday. We had 10 in the morning service, 9 in the evening service. And on uh, Thursday night, we had 30. I'll praise the Lord. Uh, 31, I'm sorry. And then on Friday night, we had 16. I praise the Lord for that. Yeah. And then uh, last Sunday, the offerings came in. We had $250 come in. And uh, 200 went into the general fund, 50 in the missions fund. And so we praise the Lord for His provision. Of course, we read from Malachi in chapter number 3 uh, this morning. And uh, you know what's amazing? I, I didn't read verse 6, but verse 6 is, For I'm the Lord. I changed not. Yep. He hadn't changed his mind right. about this context that he's dealing with. And uh, he said, that, and by the way, he said, it's because of that. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. The only reason we've not been consumed Soon because he's a gracious hey, God. Man. Even though we rob him, he's still a gracious right. God. Oh, I know I better not preach. I'm going to let Brother Gibson do that. I haven't got to preach in a week, y'all. Come on, man. I've been in meetings since last Sunday. I missed Monday night. I had some highway preaching going on, but y'all didn't want to hear that. I promise you. And, uh, but the Lord's good. And the Bible tells us in verse 10, He said, Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. What for? That there may be meat in my house. Right. And prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts, I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. 
I tell you, that sounds like a good thing. Yes, sir. A Amen. blessing right there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's just the graciousness of our God. Christopher, you pray, ask the Lord to bless the offering. After He takes the offering, uh, we'll come back and move forward in the service. Go ahead, son. Do Lord, I come for God. I thank the Lord for bringing us back to your house and see me, Lord, for another service, Lord. God, I pray, God, you please reveal the remainder of the service, Lord, yes, the preaching Lord. and singing of all the Lord. God, I pray, God, you please help us have our ears and our hearts open, listening and attend to the Word for what you have from us, for us tonight, God. Lord, God, I pray, God, you please take us off, Lord, bless the gift and the giver, Lord. Thank you, Lord, so much for many blessings on us, Lord. And I pray. Amen. service, amen, prayer meeting, Bible study. Got a couple of missionary letters to read when, uh, Thursday night, amen. and uh, we'll get back caught up again, amen. And so uh, we always do that. We start with a time of prayer before we get into the service, and then we then we uh, we sing and preach a little bit, amen. So don't forget that Thursday night. And then uh, a week from tomorrow, the 22nd, it's an old-fashioned day around here at Harvest Baptist Church, and we are looking forward to it. I promise you, Brother Fogg's a good man. He really is. And, uh, you know, I, I said it to the church the other day, Brother Fogg and I have night and day different personalities. Tommy, totally different. But I'll tell you what, I believe he loves the Lord. And he's yeah. tried to do it right uh, for a long time. He's been faithful. through the, yeah. I've known Brother Fogg probably... From a distance for many, many years, and in the last several years, God's really let us get to, in fact, I, when they first started the church there in Denton, I preached in the storefront when they were just getting started, and uh, God has blessed them, and they've been faithful, and uh, I didn't say this, I'll tell it while the church is here tonight, uh, we were there on, uh, of course, on we were going to be the Monday, but y'all know about that, and then Tuesday and Wednesday we were there uh, in the meeting, Brother Gibson was preaching over there, and on Wednesday night, uh, it's amazing how the Lord works, but on Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon, I guess Brother Fogg got an email from one of their missionaries that basically told them, we don't want your support anymore. I don't think it was like that, but he, they didn't need it anymore. You know, and whatever the case, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, uh, and and that's a good thing. I mean, typically, that's what you want. I, I can't wait to the day that we can call and, and rejoice and say, hey, thanks for investing. We're putting in the mission. We support 10 missionaries already. And, uh, but, man, and so that happened, and Brother Fogg felt led of God to... Uh, Take that support and, and double my family's support every month. Was I Amen. thought, well, yeah. man alive. So isn't that a blessing? It is. But anyways, yeah. uh, I, he's coming to preach for us next Monday night, 22nd, old-fashioned day, and uh, it'll be fun. There may just be a handful, may have a bunch, who knows. I'm going to try to get a couple other guys. Maybe they'll bring some folks over Monday night. You know what they do? Yeah. They ain't yeah. smoking a turkey that long. Yeah. Hey, man, there'll be nothing left. <laughs> and so they ain't got no excuse. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, man, yeah. I got to yeah. wash the taters. You can do that Tuesday. You're not eating it till Thursday. I mean, they'll be fine. Yeah. And so uh, we're we'll trying to invite some people. You ought to go find somebody in the community this week. Say, you never, yep. you ever been to Old Fashioned Service? What's that? I mean, either. Just come Let's check see. it out. <laughs> You'll find out. I yeah. mean, really, you can tell them if you want to see. Well, we're kind of old-fashioned every service. Hey, man, we try to stay that way. Yeah. It might look a little different around here, but it'll be all right. So don't forget that. And then uh, that'll be our midweek. I can't believe we're already looking at a week or two away from Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and then we'll be just moving right through the year. So don't forget those things. And uh, got, the Lord's got a lot of things planned for this year for us, I believe. And it'll be good. To, and, and I mentioned a couple of prayer requests quickly. Uh, I won't go over the list tonight, but don't don't forget uh, keep up with your list. I know uh, I would ask you, tomorrow, what time is this tomorrow, honey? Uh, at 12. So at, at noon tomorrow, if you remember, Mackenzie's going to have a, an MRI of her knee. Uh, she don't say much 
about it, but uh, she they really believe she's torn a meniscus in her knee, and she's probably going to have to have surgery pretty quick. Uh, and so she's got to have that, that. You know how this works. They gotta they see things. They need to go in a little bit deeper with that MRI and make sure you know see what all how bad it is. And uh, and so just pray for her situation if you would. And then, of course Hannah, and uh, just continue to pray for Hannah. Amen. And uh, we 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 will have some more definite answers in about really I guess so. It'll be three weeks. Uh, two, two, the week after Thanksgiving, we will have, uh, uh, you'll know what's going on more than I can say that, but please pray, pray, pray for me and her, pray for me and my wife too, because we got to make some real tough decisions, and, and that's, that's the benefit of Hannah only being 13, so don't have to make these decisions, but we include her, but there's some difficult decisions that we have to make, and, and it involves everybody in our family, and so we appreciate y'all praying. I know you do, and uh, we're we're just looking that God's going to do something in a special way, yeah, yeah. and uh, the grace of God is 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 definitely being manifested in, in our family, and I'm thankful for that. But there's still a, a great need. There's a great need. Here we are, you know, at, at the end of this month, it'll be six four months basically that we've been going through this battle, and uh, and Anna's tired, and aren't you, baby? She's tired, but you wouldn't know it. I appreciate you, and I appreciate you girls. All of you getting to spend time together has been wonderful. Amen. It's been wonderful, um, but you know, you know how it is. We know we've been down this road together before, but uh, it's been good for Hannah too. And, and she's she's tired. She won't say it, but I've been pulling out of her. I know she's tired, but she wouldn't trade it for nothing. So so y'all y'all been a help and a blessing there as well. And and speaking of all that, I think I heard that there's some professional singing on. No, we wouldn't have that in this <laughs> uh, But y'all come. Y'all know who you are. I don't know who you are, but y'all know who you are. Y'all need to come sing this one special together, and then we'll come back in a minute. Amen. I'm not leaving. I'm just saying we'll come back. <laughs> you sing with it, little girl? I'm going to get you. I got you one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
church that uh, he's a preacher in the church uh, where we go. It's my pastor's brother's church. I mean, he always designs a pulpit to go with the theme uh, for youth camp. And uh, the, the, camp, the, the last camp that we were on deputation before we moved out here, uh, it, was, uh, it was a missions theme, believe it or not. And, uh, and so uh, that pulpit is uh, brother he just, it's awesome. And then the center of it is on a lazy Susie that's got a huge inflatable globe. Yeah. And uh, and I said, I want that pulpit. He said, you want that preacher? I said, dude. He said, let me ask the pastor. And he said, well, you better give that to Brother Lee. And I said, every time, and we haven't had a mission conference yet, but we started the church. If y'all remember, I preached that morning on uh, basically um, introducing the word to the world introducing the word to the world and that's our theme and we started that way and I remember I've got pictures of that uh, that big old I mean it's huge globe it'd take up half this and I said every time and we will when we have a missions conference uh, as long as we can I want to use that pulpit and just cast a vision for the world amen, amen. so I it takes me back it takes me back amen. just a couple years ago it is a two-year celebration and I, I, you know, I haven't said much about it, but we are rejoicing in two years. Mm -hmm. Seemed like 20 years, but two years ain't no satisfied. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah. that's okay. My wife says the same thing about her marriage. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> she said, we've only been married 19, going on 20, feel like 50. I said, I don't know what your problem is. I said, I get sweeter with time. <laughs> she don't say much. She won't even lie in church. Amen. Uh, but it's good. It's been good. I've enjoyed that. Appreciate y'all singing that. Amen. And I tell you, I have enjoyed my my time, I'm spoiled because God lets me rub shoulders with the choices of His people, yeah. and I mean that. I, I'm humbled that God. I look, my son. I, he preached what was it, the 31st? So a couple weeks ago, he preached on Sunday night, and uh, we did a good job. He preached a he preached a message on a holy EKG. And it was good. And uh, of course, I messed up everybody and preached the wrong message on Sunday morning. You haven't done that. You haven't done that. You haven't done that. I preached. Uh, What's wrong with Halloween? Oh, well. from the Word of God. I said, well, we ought to be Bible in everything we yeah. do. And he cleaned it up for me that night, so I'm glad he <laughs> didn't do that. But, uh, but he made a statement when he was preaching. He said, he was talking about the influence of men of God. And done my heart good. I told my wife that night, I said, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear them say things like yes. this. Not just me knowing, because I told them when they were little, uh, my son was talking about, he's got, how many Bibles is it? You've got two like that? Three Bibles covered, pages, pages, listen. I'm talking about pages. Yeah. Uh, four or five in the front, four or five in the back. What's all over them pages? Men of God's signatures. Yeah. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about this, I'm talking about men of God. Milford Biddle. Yeah. Stan up Ballou. Yeah. 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 Sammy Allen, Sam yeah. Davison, men that you wouldn't know if I called their name. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about men of God. And when they were little I told them I said something, <laughs> you know, uh, brother brother uh I told him, I said, you're highly, this is blessed, you are blessed, but you are highly, highly accountable. Because they've sat under, my, my children have sat under the men of God, the, the, the young men of God, I'm talking about young men that are actually really serious about this thing, would give anything, right. anything to have heard those men preach in person. And, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about, that's the kind of privilege and heritage that my family's had 
And I'm thankful for that. Yes. And this just continues. This still continues, brother. Brother Gibson, we 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 can we consider you one of those high caliber men. That's just how we esteem you. And I know you're just a man. I don't worship men. Right. Uh, but I, I look as a young preacher. I'm still young. I'm in that. I'm still in that category. Depends on who I'm around, right? But uh, <laughs> I still look to to old men of God because as when I first started in the ministry, I looked to most of my friends that I call them dear friends at the time or close acquaintances were in their 80s and 90s. Uh, and people made fun of me all that time, Brother James, because I hung out with a lot of 80s. My, my, my wife would tell you, I spent a lot of time just sitting at the table with a bunch of 80 and 90 year old men and I didn't say a word. That's hard to believe. Well, that's what happened to me. They poured so much. It's got to come out. You it can't come out there. It's got to come out somewhere. And you think I'm kidding. My wife tell you how many times I've sat at the table and just... Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about men like J.E. Glass. Yeah. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Carl Hughes. Sutherland. I'm talking about Andy Toys. I'm talking about some men you, I'm telling you, high caliber men of God. Yeah. Just to be a man of God is high caliber in my book anyways. Because yeah. you can be a preacher and not be a man of God. Yeah. Yep. You can be a pastor yep. and not be a man yep. of God. You can carry a Bible and not be a man of God. Right. And, and I mean that. And so, <clears throat> it just does my heart good to, I just, I just enjoy it. I, I, there's nobody I'd rather sit around and visit with than people that walk with God. Amen. You know why? We got we got a common bond. Yep. We got something Amen. in common, amen, that we're going to spend yep. every... What do you think we're going to do in eternity? Yeah. We're going we're to do the same thing we're doing here, but it's all going to be sitting around Him in the flesh, yep. in, 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 in person. You know, yep. what, I, I mean, good night. And so uh, I just say that to say I, I, I'm thankful for you, Brother Gibson. I appreciate you coming and helping us and helping amen. our church and preaching to us. Uh, I remember the, the first time that I really got to start getting a little more uh, intimately acquainted was was at a brother McClaskey's a couple of years ago. I, like I said, I, I we, you know when you start talking, you start realizing, man, I spent a lot of time in and out of you all at different meetings, and, and I so I had influence. I you know I've known brother Ken Graham my entire life, and that's how uh, as a young boy and, and those men. Uh, and, and it's amazing. Sometimes they go off the scene. You never really. And then sometimes God lets them get in a little bit more intimate fellowship. And uh, but I remember uh, at Brother McClaskey's after that first night is when I, I guess you know you start really recollecting. Man, that's I love the, that brother preaching and spirit and everything about him. And I told him I said one of these days I want to have you come and uh, and preach for us. And he said I'll come. And, and, and he probably thought I was kidding. I know how he was preaching. Oh yeah, sure checks in the mail, right? That kind of thing. But I was I, God put it in my heart. And, uh, and then, then God worked it out last year. He was preaching for Brother Fogg, and he didn't know it, and I didn't know it. Brother, well, I knew. Brother Fogg told me. He called us and asked us if we'd come sing uh, for the meeting. And then I thought, man, and then when I found out he was going to come back this year, I said, Brother, I would love for that to work at it. He didn't have to travel far. Yeah. And so thank yeah. you for doing yeah. that. And, uh, and uh, praise the Lord, you know. And I, we, we'll have him back. Amen. If he'll come back. And if he'll come back. If he'll have us, we'll have him. Have yeah. Amen. And, uh, and yeah. of course, the, the, the Wolf Rams, thank you all uh, uh, for, for, for being a blessing to us. Yeah. You've helped our church. And you've helped, you've helped us down through the years. It's, it, you know, I'm glad. You know, I... I I have a lot of friends, and I mean, when you call them real friends, you really don't have that many real friends. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Right. But but uh, I have good good people that I believe God has given me some good friends, and the kind of friendships, a lot of the friends that I have, I don't have to talk to them every week. Yeah. There's not an immaturity and an insecurity. That friendship is so secure. Yeah. Yes, we communicate. Yes, we love one another, uh, and there's good fellowship. But I don't have to talk to them every other day. Uh, when it's right, you, that's just the kind. Of, I like that. That's. Yeah. I mean, I wish we had more fellowship. Don't get me wrong. I love the. But but man, I'm glad we can just pick right back up when yeah. we get hooked yeah. up. Amen. And there's not any ill will. And that's just a blessing. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, and I appreciate that. So so here in just a moment, Brother Gibson's going to come and preach to us one more time uh, tonight. I hope you. I hope you don't just leave empty. Don't 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 don't. They come empty and leave full. That's the way y'all live church life. And uh, let God speak to your heart. You don't know, you don't know, but tonight might be the night the Lord requires your soul. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's 12 hours in a day, 12 hours yeah. in a night. Uh, I heard a message one time on 12 hours till eternity. And if that were true, I wonder what we'd do different yeah. from this point on. That we, if we knew, if we knew that right. here in about two hours and 52 seconds, I'm going to breathe my last breath, whether I get ki killed in a car crash, whether I have a massive heart, whatever it is. I'm just going to kill 
If you knew in the next two hours and 52 minutes that that was it, that's all you had, and it's ticking now, it's down by two hours and 50, you know, and it just keeps going, I wonder what we'd do different. Yeah. So, so make, think about things like that when a man of God preaches and says, Lord, Amen. shake me, you know, and, and so he's got total liberty to preach. And then, of course, uh, before he preaches, uh, the war frames are going to come, and they're going to sing uh, three or four. And uh, listen, I appreciate you all, uh, and, 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 I, and you tell your wife. We love her, and we appreciate her. And I know it's, brother, I, I can't do nothing without my wife. I, I'm telling you. I think three times in the last 15 to 20 years, what, what three times maybe I've preached a meeting without my family, yeah. and that wasn't by choice. One time, me and Mackenzie and Chris had to leave the rest of them. They were sick so bad. And we had to go to and Mackenzie. I told her on the way out there. I didn't tell her until we was on the way. I said, honey, um, I told this preacher we would sing tonight. And I ain't seen him tonight. And Chris probably hasn't seen him tonight. He still wasn't sure about his voice back then. He didn't know which way he was going, you know. And uh, I mean, it's the truth, isn't it, right? It sounded yeah. like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yeah. Yeah. All three of them at the same time, you know. And uh, we got videos to prove it, amen. And uh, when he preached back then, he said, he's amen. <laughs> I'm glad for the memories of the Lord. But Mackenzie, I told her on the way out, I said, uh, she said, what you talking about, Daddy? I said, well... She said, man, you ain't never really been one to him all around. What's the point? <laughs> I said, I need you to sing tonight. I said, I can't sing tonight. Oh, yeah, you can. Well, I can sing, but I can't play the piano. And she wasn't learning how to balance. It was just new to her. And she just, it, it just was a blessing. But I said, man, and we talked about all of us talked about it. I'm like, don't never let Mama get sick again. We can't do this. Right here. So, I fear you, man. I mean that. I do. But, uh, well, I sure love it. I'm just lapping it up. You, you'll understand one of these days. Yeah. One of these days, you'll understand if you if you can get God to open. You know what I always ask God to do? Open my eyes that I can see what you've done for me. Amen. Even in things like this. That's why I try to stay mindful of all the... When I talk about the men of God and these kids' Bibles, McKenzie's got one like that too. It was just when they were really little, you know, they were the two that were... They were old enough that, that they understood some of that, you know, a little bit more. And uh, they were blessed during that season of our life. And I'm thankful for that. You know, all four of my children have been saved. I had the privilege to baptize Hannah. I, had the I don't know if I held her on. Did I hold you on? <laughs> I had the privilege to baptize Cassidy. She got saved on. You know what day you got saved? February the 13th. And you got baptized on what day? On Easter amen. this year, amen. this year, oh, amen. 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 she told me they sang that song Thursday night. I think it was Thursday night. Y'all sang "I'm Not Going to Hell." Yeah. And they all time running around singing that, and she would too. And then God started dealing with her. Oh, you don't mind if I test? Y'all got any words? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just having church today. Right. Huh? Good time. And and she got she got to, she got under conviction there for a little while during some of her some of her school stuff. And then some of some of uh, just devotions. You know, she's getting under conviction and. And uh, one day, I thought that was the day. Really, she come. We sit on the front porch with my mom, and she came up there just bawling. I'm gonna go to hell. I thought you want well, to do something about it? No, I'm not ready. So she didn't. I said, that's fine. And uh, next day, I heard her sing that song, and I said, well, now I got to deal. I got to take another step here. I would have never said nothing about it. But now she's aware of her sinfulness. So I sat her down. And I said, baby, you you told me last night when I sat on a rocking chair, you told me you're gonna die and go to hell. And she got teary eyed and said, You're right, Daddy, yes, sir. I said, Well, you can't go around singing that song until mm -hmm. you do something about that. And she's, I mean, it was a somber puppy dog face. But yes, sir. She didn't ever sing it again. Well, I'm telling you what, five minutes after she got saved, she ran through the house and grabbed McKenzie, <laughs> grabbed Chris, let's go to the piano. Amen. I can sing, I'm not going to. You said, That don't do nothing for me. That's because you're not in yet. Yeah. 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 You better help you. And so uh, then the only thing she was worried about, she goes, that water going to be heated up and bring money. But it's good to be saved, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what, ain't nothing better. Hey, man, it's serving Jesus with yes, your family. Right. And uh, I got some drug babies. They're okay. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, some of them's getting addicted to it. Hey, man, they start finding other people. Man, we all sing together. Praise yeah. God. I don't, only the Lord can do that. Yeah, only right. the Lord can do that. So, so Brother Wolf, if you bring your family. Yeah. Most of your family, some of your family, you're getting smaller. Yeah, time, I told you not Bring to do that. Bring what's left. Got leftovers tonight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to pre I'm going to preach leftovers tonight. Can I borrow all, all those toes? Yeah. I'm going to preach leftovers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how you got so much of leftovers? I'm going to spill the water. If I don't, that preacher's going to be getting messed up. Oh, my God. I'm going to mess it all night. You've got all leftovers.
with the residue he made of God. Amen. Isn't that true? Yeah. Well, that'll preach. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Thank you so much for having us. And uh, Michelle wanted me to make sure I'd be in trouble. I don't say thank you for her. She uh, is about in tears, not being able to be here tonight, but Lord knows. So, uh, sure does. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's sing about him a little bit, won't it? Y'all do. Amen. <laughs>
rejoicing in unspeakable joy and full of glory. It's amazing, but praise God, I know it's real. My, 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 what a joy to see my Jesus. Oh, that I could explain the way I feel. Rejoicing in unspeakable joy and full of glory. It's amazing, but praise God, I know it's real. Can you sing, I'm free to worship? That was the next one on the list. Well, Lord, didn't that, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he you got to sing, amen. <laughs> I ain't God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. That's, amen. He makes his will known. Yeah. <clears throat> I like that.
in that time. Thank you, preacher, for everything. You just really made us feel at home and yeah. thoroughly enjoyed the fellowship and you've gone over and above yep. to allow us to do some things and unique places to go to and Amen. fed us well. I am fed up. <laughs> and I just fed us yeah. well. Amen. Good night, my soul. And uh, uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Of course, all you'll be with the Wolframs and what a blessing. Good thing. It is a good thing. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Right. I like good yeah. things. Amen. I like good things. It is a good thing. That's right. And, uh, man, it's a pleasure to meet, meet y'all as well. See where you're at. You have to pray a little better with, uh, with your church and looking forward to what God's going to do in days ahead. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter number 27. Deuteronomy chapter number 27. Deuteronomy chapter number 27. And we're going to get our reading in verse number 11. Deuteronomy chapter number 27, in verse number 11. When you find it, if you would stand with us as we read the scriptures. This evening, Deuteronomy chapter 27, and beginning in verse number 11. <clears throat> the Bible says that Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you come over Jordan, Simeon and Levi, and Judah and Iscar, and Joseph and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulon, and Dan, and Aphtali. And the Levites shall speak and say to all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Look better than that. All the people shall answer and say, Amen. Verse 16, Cursed be he that says light by his father or his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovered his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother in law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that taketh uh, reward to slay an innocent person and all the people shall say Amen. curse be the conformeth not to all the words of this law to do them and all the people shall say Amen. Father again thank you mm. once again for the privilege we have to be gathered in your house tonight thank you for these days yes, that you've Lord. given to us God precious time we thank you for it fellowship we've enjoyed with you and with others and God we thank you for this church and God pray continue to put your hand upon this place, bless the dear man of God, Amen. his precious wife and their family as they labor for you. And God, give them fruit for their labors. And, and uh, dear God, just handfuls on purpose all along the way. And Father, we pray you'd help us please tonight to be a help. And we'll certainly give you the praise for what you do. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God Amen. bless you. You can be seated. Moses charges the people they're about to enter the promised land and the word Deuteronomy means second law or second given of the law. It's written the last month or two in the life of Moses. There's a lot of things repeated in Deuteronomy that are found in some of the other writings that he did. And it's really speaking of that next generation, the first generation come to the edge of the promised land and they sent in the spies and ten of the twelve discouraged the people and they didn't go in and they wandered 40 years in the wilderness so that generation died off. The next generation is about to go in Moses knows he's not going to be able to be with them. And so the book of Deuteronomy has written the last month or two of his life, and he's given them instructions that's going to help them to succeed when they get into the promised land. Yeah. I like the book of Deuteronomy. Yeah. I, I like whatever book I'm reading at the time, but yeah. I like the book of Deuteronomy. I almost picture it as a daddy on his deathbed, and he's 
calling yeah. his children around, his grandchildren around, and he knows he's not going to be there to guide them and to help them along the way. And so he gives to them the most vital things they're going to need in life to succeed and to get by. That's why I picture the book of Deuteronomy. And he's told the children of Israel, he said, when you get in the land, uh, here's, here's some things that will help you to be successful when you get there. And he, he charges the people and he talks about half the tribe's going to stand on Mount Gerasim and they're going to speak blessings unto the people and the other half going to stand on Mount Ebal and they'll speak cursings unto the people. You know, and we need a balance of both. We, we need the positive and the negative. Right. Right. But we need to hear the things that God blesses and, and the positive things. We also need to know the things to stay away from uh, that he'll judge. We, we need a balance of the positive and, and the negative. Right. Uh, you know, some, some places all they are is just positive all the time. Right. And not going to offend anybody in the negative. They can go the other hand. And there's some place you go where it's just negative all the time. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing positive. I remember I had a preacher friend who was that way. I'm there for a message, but just, just negative. And we preached a lot with him at different places. And, and I remember a man asked him one time, he said, Could I ask you a question? He said, What's that? He said, Do you even have a positive message? I mean, have you ever preached a positive message in your life? And he said, You come back tomorrow night, and I'm going to preach a positive message. And uh, so, I mean, he built it up that night. He said, now, I was asked today, if I ever pass the message, you come back tomorrow night, I'm going to preach a positive message. And, of course, that night it wasn't it. Man, he, he ripped everything that moved and some things that did. And uh, the next night he got up, he said, oh, tonight is my positive message. I'm positive God hates smoking. And I'm positive God hates drinking. And he just went down. Let's just pause about all these <laughs> negative things. <laughs> but we do need a balance of both. I mean, right, we need right. both in the Word of God. We need some thou shalt and thou shalt not. Right. We, we need that, that, that balance. And, and then he said the Levites are going to stand, verse number 14, and they're going to speak to the men of Israel with a loud voice. And, and so they're, they're going to stand and proclaim with a loud voice and, and even tells them ahead of time, here's what they're going to say. Uh, they're going to stand. They're going to, here's what you're going to say when you get there. Levites with a loud voice. Uh, they're going to stand. And uh, they're going to proclaim these things. I, I remember one time I was it was at a youth meeting and, and several preachers over there, good size uh, youth meeting, and, and we preached that each year. And, and I was in the, in the youth pastor's office and get some thoughts together. One of the other preachers was there that year. He come by and said, "What are you, what are you doing?" He said, "When well, I'm just trying to get some thoughts together for message tonight." And, and he said, uh, "Don't you believe that verse? Open my mouth wide and I'll fill it." I said, "Yes, sir, I do." There's times it's spur of the moment. And uh, you're just amazed. The Holy Ghost give you the same hour, what you ought to say, and, uh, and such. I said, but I'm just trying to do like the prophets did. You know, God always came ahead of time, and he said, speak to the children of Israel. Thus so you speak, right, saying, right. and God gave them a message ahead of time. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to do. Ahead of time, I get a message and study now, right. and uh, get, gather some thoughts together to preach to the people. He made this statement to me, preacher. He said, I never study. Of course, he didn't have to say that. I'd heard him preach that right before and, uh, uh, and stuff. But, but, but he says to Levites, here's, here's what you're to say. And he gives them what they're supposed to say. By the way, right. by the way we, want, we want the man of God to preach to us the message that God gives him. Right, right. that. Amen. Come ask God. Talk a little bit about that this morning. Man. We, need, we need a man of God with a message from God and, uh, and, and to give us what God has given him. And so here it is. It's the Levites to speak. And here's what they're going to say. And he gave them the message ahead of time. And it seems like with every line that is spoken, he said that all the people shall answer yeah. and yeah. say, Amen. That's right. Uh, now, off the times of being in church, and uh, it might be winding out, and the preacher might say it all God's people said, amen. and we all say Amen. Yeah. And that, that's found in the Bible. But that's not what it says here. It didn't say all God's people said Amen. It right. says all God's people shall say Amen. Mm. Uh, a couple years ago, right, right before I stepped down for pastoring, uh, one of my assistant, one of my associate pastors, had, had uh, his father had passed away. He didn't go to our church, didn't go to church at all, and tried to wish to himself. It was kind of a rough life. He, uh, he wasn't married to the woman he's with. He'd been with her for, I don't know, 30 years or something. And, and, and uh, uh, my, my assistant pastor, he had, he had like three brothers, so they're all from different moms, and uh, same dad, and and, uh, and so that's what he, what he married to, to this one and, and such. And, and he passed away. And, and uh, the oldest child was a, was a girl. She went to a, one of those mega churches in the community and, and, and such. So she kind of handled uh, funeral arrangements and had her pastor to, uh, to preach a message. They did allow my assistant to, 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 to speak as well. He did a great job, great job presenting the gospel and, and such. And, and, uh, and, and then that, that pastor got up. Of course, we were there. And so the church folk and respect uh, to the staff member. And, 
And uh, that, that, that preacher got up and he'd say things about the fact that we just, we all hope we're going to make it to heaven one day. Wow. And, and you know the word hope is in the Bible, but it's not used the same way we use it. Right. In the Bible, the word hope talks about an expectation. Yeah. yeah. We're looking for that blessed hope. Amen. Glorious appearing. Yeah. We're, we're not hoping he'll come. We're expecting him yeah. to come. Yeah. Right. And, and hope deferred makes the heart sick. You're expecting something that doesn't happen. It's, right. it's right. kind of dis disappointing. And, and, and so, so I, I'm not hoping to get to heaven. I'm, I'm expecting right. to get there right. because I've been born in heaven. Nobody's going to be surprised they went to heaven. Right. Right. <laughs> Amen. So the one way to get there, and you know right. if you've been born again, right. multitudes going to be surprised they're in hell, but nobody's going to be surprised that yeah. they're in hell. That's right, preacher. And uh, uh, anyway, he got up. He said, you're going to hope. And, and then he used the illustration of all the casinos going up and people hoping to get rich. And he kind of played it that way. And he said, you know, your best chances of winning and going to heaven, you got to be baptized. And he said, you got to be baptized if you're going to get to heaven. Now, baptism's a good thing, but I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't save you. It's not going to be a place in heaven. Right. In fact, Peter says that baptism, it's a, it's a figure or a picture of your salvation. Right. It's a picture Jesus died, was buried, and yep. rose again. And your life is gone. You've got a new life to walk in God. But it said, but, but baptism, he says, it, it does not put away the filth of the flesh. That means it never has, it never will wash away a single sin. Right, right. But if you ever look in a baptistry, it can't keep itself clean. Right. And you expect to wash your sins away, it ain't happen. But it does say it's the answer of a good conscience towards right, God. Right. Yep. It's something we all do after we get saved, but it's not going to save you. Amen. And, uh, and then he would say, uh, you know, you got to just do your best. He started talking about good works. And when he said you need to be baptized, uh, you know, all across the room, he's got a good size following and congregation. And many of them were there and all across the room. I mean, when he said you need to be baptized, they all responded with amen. And then he said, you, you got to have good works if you're going to get to heaven. And they were all saying amen. Wow. And then he'd go on and talk about different things that you can only hold. But your best chances if you do this and this. And they were all spotted by saying, Amen. Wow. And I sat there and I thought within myself, why are these people amen in this? Come on, right. I mean, this is the truth. Right, right, right. Then my mind began to go a little further. And I began to think Baptist churches all across this land where truth is being spoken. Yep, yep. Yeah. There's silence. Not a word is said. Yep. From the people. So I decided to go back and look up the word Amen. Yeah. I think the word amen is found 78 times in the word of God. We're going to look at every one of them tonight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 78 times in 72 verses. And the first mention of the word amen is in Numbers chapter 5. And, and it's written kind of the same context as what we got here. It's not that they said amen, but they're instructed to say amen. Yeah. Numbers chapter 5, the woman, if the husband has a spirit of jealousy, he, he thinks maybe his wife's been unfaithful. She's been brought in and better bring the water, take the dust from the, uh, the floor of the time night, better sprinkle it in there. She's to drink it. And, and, and the priest to say, if you've been unfaithful, then uh, this water's going to cause your belly to swell and, and you'll find a rock. In fact, that's where we get, I think, a statement when somebody's expecting that we say it's in the water, you know. Yeah. And but, but he said, you drink this, if you've been unfaithful, it's going to cause your belly to swell and you'll find a rock. And she was instructed, uh, when they, he said that, she's instructed to say, amen. In fact, Numbers chapter 5, verse 22. And it, it, it says, and this water that causes the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell, thy find a rock. And the woman shall say, Amen, amen. The next 12 times the word amen is found in the Bible was in our reading. The first 13 verses, the first 14 times the word amen is found in the Bible. About the first 17% of, of total times the word amen is found in the Bible. It, it's God saying that the people shall say amen. Come on. He's instructed them. This woman is told that if, if this happens, the priest is going to say that now this, I, I mean, if you've been unfaithful, the, the judgment's going to come. And she is, she is told to respond yeah. by saying, Amen, Amen. Right. And then I'll read here where they give them the promise. Like, I mean, Moses is instructing them things that are going to help them to succeed when they get in the land. And then he said, When the Levites stand and he proclaims truth to you, God is giving him the truth. He proclaims that you are to respond by saying, Amen. That's right. Oftentimes, I get ready to preach. You get this, you get this, and somebody come up and they'll say, Are oh, you ready? <laughs> and I usually say something like, well, if I'm not, you won't have to tell me. We'll both know. Yeah. <laughs> and a preacher is responsible yes, sir. to get a message from God and, and to preach it to you. Amen. And as I mentioned this morning, you're blessed to have that. Amen. But if he does so, then the people have a responsibility as well. That's right. Yep. To respond to that message that's proclaimed. 
both verbally and visibly. Yes, sir. To respond by saying, Amen. I mean, if they can amen false doctrine, certainly we can amen truth. Right, amen. amen. And He's given this. I mean, if you want to succeed, He's, he's laid that. Here's what's going to be. When the man of God stands and He proclaims truth, then you are to respond to that truth. You know, it's not just about a, a man of God getting up here and, and preaching. There is responsibility when you come to church and sit in the pew. You also have a responsibility right. to respond to that truth that's right. being preached. Yes, so I will flip it around to that. Are you ready for church? Come on. Mm. I'm supporting the man that stands behind this pulpit is ready, prepared, has something from God. Could I say, when you come sit in the pews, you also have a responsibility yes, Amen. Sir. Amen. to respond that's good. to truth that well, is preached. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for church? Well, I thought to myself, why? I mean, if Moses has given them things that to help them to succeed, I mean, why is this so important? Come on. So I'll give you about 400 reasons tonight yeah. of why you ought to say amen. Good. And go beyond that, why you ought to respond yeah. both verbally and visibly. I, 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 think, I think responding to what's being preached ought to be, matter of fact, here he said, all people shall say amen. It ought to be a verbal response, but also it ought to be a visible response where, where when the invitation is given, we come, to, we come to the altar and we respond and then we apply that to our life and we respond to the truth we heard, and it changes our life. And I love it. I love coming to the house. I still love coming to the house of God. When I first got saved, I come in. My, my preacher would preach, and I'm telling you, it would hit me every time. Right, it right. seemed like every time in church, he's preaching right to me. Yeah. And I mean, I remember I got saved, and man, he preached on smoking every, every time. Every, now, when I got saved, God took drinking away from me. He took my temper away from me. And, and I mean, there's some things he does. He takes away from you. And there's some things he wants you to quit yeah, just to yeah, prove yeah. you love him more than you love your sin. It'd be good if he just took everything away and we didn't have any battles, yeah, would it? Yeah. But he wants us to choose him right. over all these things. Yeah. And man, smoking, that was a tough one for me. Finally got a victory about three weeks ago. Life was good not to. And I go to church, he preach on smoking. Ooh. Man, I just do it. Everybody's looking at me. He's pointing at me. Yeah. He did everything but call me by name. Yeah. And uh, we, we get out of church, we get in the car, and I wouldn't bring him in the, in the church. I wouldn't keep him in my pocket would come to church. I'd put them in the glove box. And, yeah. and uh, I'd go out and I'd say, hey, give me them cigarettes. We'd be going down the road. I'd fling them things out the window. I'd say, give me that light. And I'd fling it out the window. And the next day, I'd say, I'm done. And the next day, I'd drive by. I said, I'd throw them things out there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Look for them again. And then when I finally did get victory, man, I couldn't wait for the preacher to preach on it. Yeah. Never yeah. mention it again. <laughs> very seldom. I listen to messages later. Very seldom he mentioned it then. But the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We'll sure deal with me every time I come to church. Oh, yeah. You know what I found, preacher, when, 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 when somebody says, all the preacher ever preaches on is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, they're guilty what they're saying is, my problem is, yeah. Yeah. Amen. because the preacher might not even mention, but, but the Holy Spirit of God <laughs> just keeps nudging right, your heart right. while you're there. Yeah. I, I thought he preached every message on smoking and <laughs> pointed at me and everybody in the place looked at me. I listened to him later, not a word, not, not a word. And if it was, it was very seldom as he went through a bunch of other things. Not a word, but it, but it sure seemed to me. But that was because of the Holy Spirit of God. When somebody says, all that preacher preaches on is given. Yeah. Come on. We had one guy who quit said, man, all you preach on is, is shacking up. <laughs> he was shacked up. Well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm not saying I, I don't preach on I'm telling you, that's not all I praise. Right, they right. just hit it every time. He, but when he comes to the house of God. That's what God was dealing with his heart Amen. and his heart, his heart about and, uh, and, and says, but, but, but we're going to succeed. Why the importance, uh, and, and like I said, respond, is, it ought to be verbally, it ought to be amens, Amen. but it ought to go beyond that. It ought to be an altar and it ought to change our Amen. lives. Amen. Why, why is it important? Let me give you some reasons why I want to say amen. Number one, because God said you ought to. That's right. That ought to be enough right there. I mean, yes, I mean, the first 14 times the word is mentioned, we're instructed by God to say amen. Yeah. Yeah. God said y'all do it. Now, that, 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 oh, okay, okay. Your preacher's part is to get a message from God and preach truth. And if he does that, then you have a responsibility. When he preaches truth, now I guess, I guess you've got to study the Bible well enough to know what truth is. Yeah, come on. But if you have a responsibility, I'm not talking about amen in the preacher. I'm talking about amen in truth. Right, right. And no God-called preacher tries to preach just to get people to amen him. Right. It's not about amen in the preacher. Yes. A God-called preacher is going to preach truth whether you amen, amen. whether you run the aisles, or whether you sit there and fall asleep. Amen. He's going to preach truth. Right. It's amen. not about amen in the preacher. That's good. It's about amen in truth. That's good. God said y'all do it. And in our text, the line was spoken. All right, they're going to say this. What do they do? 
All God's people are going to say, Amen. Talk to me. Amen. And they're going to say this, and all God's people are going to say, Amen. Some of you amen more tonight than you ever did to church service in your whole life already. God, just read the text. Just read the text. God said you ought to. For a second reason, it declares unity amongst God's people. Sure does. He said all the people shall say, Amen. That's right. I guess that means that we all have to be here. Yeah. But we're all in agreement. Come on. And it shows unity amongst God's people. I, I mean, we had we had church. We started church one time, Richmond, and uh, out, it was outside of military base. And man, man, I'm telling you, I, I love working in the military. They already knew chain of command. They already knew do it by the book. And, and I mean, they were away from home for the first time, and church became their home. And I'm telling you, God blessed. And we saw <coughs> folks saved, and several of them uh, that had surrendered to preach and and uh, and such. And man, I, I'm telling you, just God blessed in tremendous ways. And then it got to be, I'd be in the office studying before church, and they'd be showing up early, and they're in their fellowship, and I'd hear one of them say, Hey, Brother Reed, yeah, Brother John, 15 minutes till preaching time. And man, it was on. You go, Whoa! Man, they're hooping and hollering. It settled down. Then pretty soon, Hey, Brother Reed, uh, yeah, Brother David, 10 minutes till preaching time. And then, Whoa! Man, they're hooping and hollering and tearing. Man, I get out there, and I just hold my Bible and put it on a platform. They're standing up and waving handkerchiefs and hooping and hollering. Man, I'm telling you, you're talking about an easy place to preach. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. wonder folks got saved and things began to happen in that realm. But I had one old man in the, in the church, and he, he came one time and said, Preacher, I mean, there were times I used a lapel mic. We recorded from the lapel mic, and there were times you couldn't hear me. Yeah, when yeah. I got God, I just had to stop and shout out in a while to go back and preach it again yeah, and, uh, and such. And, oh, yeah. and, and I mean, I mean, it was just, it was just good. And, and I had an old man in church come up one time. He said, he said Brother Gibbs, he said, I, I, I really don't know if all that shouting is real. <laughs> That's why I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if it's all real or not either. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's probably some that aren't. Right. I said, but I know you're sitting back there all dried up as real. Thank you. For yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you for being real. Yeah. yeah. Amen. He said, well, I just don't want to be a hypocrite. I said, you know what a hypocrite is? It's someone who pretends to be something they're not. All right. I said, are you saved and going to heaven? He said, well, yeah. I said, then why do you act like you're not? Right. You know, I, I mean, it, it shows unity amongst God's people. When people walk in, it's like, man, man, they, they got, they're, they're all on the same page here. Yeah, yeah sir. Right. right. There's a third reason. Because it's truth being spoken. Yes, sir. By the way, that's where our unity is found. That's right. If they can amen false doctrine, surely we can amen truth. The next mention of the word amen. King David is sick. First Kings chapter 1. King David is sick. Adonijah, the brother of Absalom, is setting himself up as king. Bathsheba and Nathan the prophet come in and they tell King David what's taking place. So David calls for Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and, and he instructs them to anoint Solomon as the king. And when he gives that instructions, 1 Kings 136, it says, And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord God of my Lord, the king, say so too. Here's what he said. Amen. That's what God says. Yeah. Right. We ought to make amen because of the truth being spoken. Amen. As I mentioned, we're not amen in the preacher, we're amen in truth. Right. Right. And this is where we have our fellowship. It's all centered around this book. Amen. That's why we can have unity. It's all centered around this book. It's called the fellowship of the gospel. And, right. and then we, here's where we got our fellowship. You know, there's all kinds of churches springing up today, and if the fellowship is not around the gospel, they've got to find something else to buy. Yeah, yeah. Come on. So we've got a lot of these cowboy churches going on. Oh, God help. I drive by sometime and I think, well, I'm not a cowboy. I guess I can't go there. Yeah. yeah. Cowboy church. Guess what they have in common? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. The cowboys. Mm -hmm. Then there's a biker church. Yep. Yep. I do have a bike. Mm -hmm. I, I told the doctor, you think it'd help me some if I rode a bike? He said, oh yeah, it'd help you a lot. So I went and got a gold wing. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't lost any weight, but I'm having time alive. <laughs> I'm <gonna> ride it. <laughs> biker church. Guess what they have in common? Yep. But I tell you, I'll around the gospel. Oh, yeah. Right. You can be a cowboy and fit in here. You, you, can write, sure. you can be a biker and fit in here. Because right. what we have in common is this book right here. It's not, sure. it's not about amen and the preacher. Right. It's about amen, amen. and truth. Yeah. And when the truth is spoken, hey, he has a responsibility to preach truth. And when he does, you have a responsibility to respond. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. 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 The next time, I, I give you another reason. Because it exalts the Savior. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the church of the living God. That's right. Amen. Right. 
I don't know what you're talking about the other day about, about dead churches and all that, uh, uh, dead places and, and all. You know, you know, even even the, even the unclean spirits don't like dry places. Come on, brother. The Bible says Matthew 12, 43, when the unclean spirit is gone out, a man, he walks through dry places, seeking rest, finds none. The devil's don't even like dry places. Right, right. The devil's going to show up when things are happening. Yeah, right. Amen. God said one time, well, the devil's never bothered us. <laughs> they told Billy Sunday one time, you rub the cat the wrong way. He said, tell the cat to turn around. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't bother you because you're going the same direction. I don't know. But the next mention of the word, amen, 1 Chronicles 16, David is singing a song, a song of thanksgiving unto the Lord. And when he finished, verse number 36, he said, Bless me, the Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. Amen. What's happening? It just starts off, hey, that's truth, amen. That's yeah. truth, amen. That's truth, amen. Here's what happens. Now it's turning into praise. Yeah. Why? Because this book is from yeah. Him. Right. And this book right. lifts up Him. Hey. And we exalt the Savior when we lift up the Word of God. Right. And now it's turned to praise. Hey, Moses knew if they get involved in responding, it's going to have an impact on their life. It might be we're losing the next generation because we're failing oh, to respond right. to truth. Amen. Amen. That's right. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's all Savior. It's, it's now turned to praise and, and, and then some praise and taking, taking place. That's another reason. It causes growth amongst the people. The next mention of the word Amen, Nehemiah 5.13. And all the congregation said Amen and praised the Lord and the people did according yes, to this promise. Yeah. Well, just ain't in the truth. And pretty soon they realize where the truth comes from and talk about Him and start praising Him. And now we find people start obeying. Yes, sir. I, I've always said, if God ever gets your heart, you don't have any problems obeying Him and following Him. That's right. God gets your heart. You teach people anything. God, God has their heart. Yes, sir. This will please God. We even had a fellow one time with one of the preacher boys. He got up and then he preached and he, he was talking about women dressing right. And he said, he said, a woman told me the other day, he said, it, it didn't bother her to dress like that. And he said, I, I just told her, God never said it would bother you. He said it bothers him. Yeah. 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 Amen. Good. And, and when he's lifted up, it is all about pleasing him. Right. Amen. And, uh, and and it's not a matter of, I've just never been convicted of that. Well, but would it please him? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Now, the truth is, your preacher's going to love you regardless. Right, right. Wherever you are, no matter, he's going to love you. Sure. But it's all a matter of pleasing him. Yeah, that's right. And, and when the amen, it, it turned to praising him. And now it turns back that they're obeying. It causes growth amongst God's people. Yes, sir. The next mention of the word amen, Nehemiah 8, 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, amen, amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Yeah. I mean, there are more amens that are heard. They're lifting their hands. And they're bowing their heads in right. worship. Yes, sir. It's causing growth amongst God's yeah. people. Yeah. I'll tell you another reason, y'all. Amen. It encourages the preacher. Sure yeah. does. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you, no God called preacher preaches. Right. For amen. Yeah. I've been some services you have, you have. A guy gets up like, and you feel like that's all he's trying to do is get. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. amen. You know, type thing. No, but no God called preacher mm. stands before his people and preaches. That's right. To get amen. That's right. He, he's just going to preach truth. But it encourages the Acts chapter 17, Paul yeah. goes to Athens. He, he's left Silas and, and, and Timothy and, and Berea and Thessalonica. He's been kind of running out of the area. Yeah. He goes down to Athens. He sees the city holy given idolatry. And it makes a statement. His spirit is stirred within him when he sees the city holy given idolatry. I mean, he looks at his spirit is stirred. I mean, he's, he's bothered in the fact that he's given idolatry. And, and I mean, he preaches there. Not a lot takes place. I mean, same message. He's preaching. Not a lot takes place. And no church is established. He leaves there and he goes to Corinth. While in Corinth, Silas and Timothy show up. And when they showed up, business picked up. Yes, sir. Now, the Bible says in Acts 18, 5, And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit. And testified that Jews and Jesus was pressed. Now, when he was in Athens, he was stirred in the Spirit. We saw the city of idolatry. When they showed up at Corinth, he's now pressed in the Spirit. Yes, sir. The word pressed means to be compelled. Oh. It's taken from a word where we get our word companionship. Mm. He said, I don't feel like I'm all alone. Mm. Yeah, come on. There's people out there that are on the same page here. Mm. And I just believe he preached, and, and I just believe with, with, with Timothy and Silas, Paul started, I mean, he's in Athens, the Spirit of Sturdy, he preaches truth. But when he gets to court and they show up, I think they sat in the front row and they said, Amen, Paul. Yeah. Amen, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, Paul. Amen. And it's not just stirred in the Spirit. He's now pressed in the Spirit. He, he's compelled. He, he's got 
companionship, the preacher just does better when he knows there's others out Amen. there who right. agree with what he's saying. Amen. That's why your pastor eats this up. Yep. When a group of people come together yep. like this, you can look out there and they're nodding their head like, not like this. Right. <laughs> they're nodding their head. They're amen. And they're, amen. I mean, it's just... There's just something on the inside of those people Amen. out there. You just you, you say, well, I would encourage a preacher because people are getting involved. I mean, I mean, his desire is to preach truth and to have an impact on your life and change your life and that you know God's best on your life. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's talking about Malachi 3 twice today. <clears throat> and uh, prove me now. This is the only place in the Bible where God invites you to prove him. He says, put me to the test. See if I won't do what I claim to do. That's right. I'm going to open you the windows of heaven. Pour you out a blessing there's not room enough to receive. I'm not telling you. Sometimes it's just... There's, yeah. I mean, just, and, and rebuke the devourer. I mean, the, the, the times that he protects you. Yep. Yes, well, the devourer right. would love to get you. And he says, no, 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 that one ties. Yep. 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 Right. Amen. There's times we miss a road going down the highway. And uh, my wife said, you missed your turn. And I said, oh, isn't that somehow God protected us? We'd have gone that way, probably been in the wreck. God yep. protected us. Yep. Yep. Isn't that amazing? She said, I'll tell you what's amazing. How, how more often God protects you the older you get. That's what's amazing. Yeah. <coughs> Elijah was a great man of God. Would you agree with me on that? Yes, sir. Amen. Take about my turn to 1 Kings 18. Familiar portion of Scripture, 1 Kings chapter 18. I'm in this famous message. God be God. Yeah. I don't hold you between two opinions. Famous message. Now you talking about preaching. Yes, how, many, how many messages do you think have been preached from that? How long holds you between two pigeons? God be God, serve him. I mean, I mean you talk about you, you talk about you, you talk about you talk about preaching. Verse 1 Elijah came to all uh, the people and said, How long will hold you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But Baal will follow him. Look at the last statement in that. And the people answered him, not a word. Him, if they'll find it. I mean, he is preaching truth. Yep. And looks at the people and just. Yep. Look at the next verse. Then said Elijah to the Lord, people, I, even I only. He fell all alone. Yeah. He said, Well, they're all there. But they're not saying a word to his coming at him as he preaches. There are preachers and preachers' wives all across this land that are discouraged because they wonder, is any of us just getting past the first pew? Does it just go across the pulpit and fall? Is, is, is anybody getting this? Right. Mm -hmm. And they stand and faithfully proclaim truth, but the people answer not a word. And, and, and many, there's no amens, there's no, 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 all, no one at the all. I mean, just, and they wonder, is anybody getting this? And I've got dear preacher friends. Have taken their lives. Yes, sir. Yeah. Elijah was there. Yeah. The only thing that kept him from doing that was when he saw there were others that hadn't bowed their knees. Sure. Yeah. There's others that got it. Yeah. Now, if great men like Paul need encouragement, and great men like Elijah need encouragement, sure. Do you think maybe your dear man of God and his precious wife <laughs> Amen. might need this one? Oh, yeah. Yep. Amen. No, I, 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 is it, are you, do you think maybe you can talk to me? Right. You think maybe you're mad at God and his wife might need his will? Yeah. yeah. That's right. And you can say amen. amen. You think maybe you're mad at God and his wife might need his will? Amen. amen. Sure. 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 And the only thing that hurts him is they find there's others that haven't bowed. And, and they're not looking for amen. So they're just right. looking for somebody that gets this. Yeah. yeah, amen. That's right. Somebody that grabs a hold of this. I'll tell you another reason y'all say man, because it convinces the sinner. Yes, sir. The preacher says something about it the other day. Yeah. Acts chapter 18, Paul's in Corinth, and after he's pressed in the spirit, when Silas and Timothy showed up, verse number 8 says, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. That's right. That didn't happen at Athens. Same preacher. Yeah. Same book. But when there was people there responded. Yes, sir. It had an impact on the other people that were listening. Yes, sir. First Corinthians 14, he made references, verse 21, 25. But if all prophesy, foretell the truth, and there come in one that believeth not and want to learn, he's convinced of all. Everybody convinces right. him. He's judged of all. Thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. So falling down in his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Here's what happens. A preacher gets up and says, I'm telling you, it's good to be saved 
Amen. And the people say, Amen. We do better than that. It's good to be saved. Amen. Man, I'm telling you, aren't you glad you're going to heaven? Amen. And so he does it. And when people respond, when others come in, I'm telling you, it convinces them. They expect the Baptist preacher to be crazy, and they're going to be convinced of it when they get in. Yeah. But when everybody says amen, and he gets up and preaches, they'll just say, man, one of them crazy Baptist preachers. But when the he preaches and the people say amen, yeah. they begin yeah. to think, hey, everybody believes this. Yeah. There's just yeah. not something to this. Yeah. And you have to convince us. I wonder how many times lost people have sat in our pews and got them with their heart, yeah. but they didn't get saved because the preacher, I mean, he was faithful to fulfill his responsibility. He was ready for church, but we in the pew. Right, right, right. Failed in our responsibilities to respond. Mm -hmm. I went to the funeral that day, preacher. And I already knew what I believed. Had I not, mm -hmm. they would have convinced me that what he said was right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why all this place is preaching false doctrine. Mm -hmm. Seemed to convince people. Because the pew gets involved. That's right. Amen. Oh, that's good. All right. Yep. Yeah. Now, if they can do that with false doctrine, oh, yeah. surely we can do that with truth. Amen. Amen. Right. If your preacher would come up Sunday and say, you know what, I just, I just didn't feel like getting something from God today. Mercy. I don't know that I will anymore. We just kind of gather together and mm. chat. Marcy. You'd be highly upset and y'all and you'd have every right to be. Yeah. But the preacher not ready for church was something from God. It's just as wrong for you to come to church. What? Amen. And not ready to respond. Amen. 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 That's good. Verbally and visibly. Yes, sir. Why would you put this most why would you put the that's gonna say this and all the people shall say? I mean, you're trying to tell them how to succeed because it's more than about amen. Right. It exalts the Savior and it causes right. growth. Right. Yeah. It'll encourage the man of God to preach his truth. <laughs> if you would have me at your house to eat, which isn't a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, a preacher is fed us this week. Oh, my. And if he worked hard like he did, his dear wife worked hard for the meals that they prepared. And, and, and Brother Jim and I come, we sat at the table. And, I mean, they worked hard. They put the spread out. And we sat at the table going. Yeah. 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 That's right. They probably wouldn't work so hard to get something together next time. Right. Yeah. But we sit down and we say, oh, good night. Yeah, yeah. I think I had three or four plates. And, you know, <laughs> actually, one plate. I just filled it up three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm good. I feel like I'm going to explode. <laughs> then they had dessert. I'm thinking, there's no way. Then I saw the dessert. Mm, he made a way when there was no way. <laughs> He's good at that. <laughs> but you'll sit down to eat it up. You'll go to the something better next time. That's why he's in the house of God. Yes, sir. I just asked this question. Why would you not eat me? Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, I just don't get excited. I had a guy in my church that said that. I, I just don't get emotional. He uh, he was in bow competition. She won nationals. He and his wife both won nationals. Wow. I went with him one competitions. The last shot, three dimensional, and it's across valleys and shadows, hard to judge the distance. And he got that bow and let that thing fun. Hit that hit that target. Man, he hit that center target. He knew he wanted the thing. He dropped that bow. He jumped in the middle. Oh, did you see that? Whoa, oh, did you see that? And I just yeah. stood there. Mm. He said, did you see that? I said, no. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just not emotional. Mm. <laughs> How about that? Mm -hmm. No, you get emotional about what you love. That's right. That's it right now. Amen. Amen. We tell our kids there's nothing greater than serving the Lord. And they see us in a ball game. Oh and my. see us in the house of God. Right. Now that preacher, right. come on. And they think, that looks a little more exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, when, when, when you hear truth, you, you respond. You say, hey, man, it'll have an impact on you. It'll have an impact on your kids. You know, my, my, as a husband, my wife needs to see me as an altar. Yes, sir. Bow down before God. That's right. Direction. 
as a daddy, my children need to see me in all. Bow down for God, see me. As a grandpa, my as a people, my my, my grandchildren need to see me in altar. And as a man, I need to be in an altar. Right. Man. Bow down before God. <laughs> no. When I get behind the pulpit, I've got a responsibility. Man, what a heavy responsibility. Yep. Yes, sir. Bring a message from God. But when I sit in the pew, I also have a responsibility. Amen. That's good. To respond to truth. Verbally. And visibly, you, you may not get up. You may not get up and run around mm -hmm. building, but you can sometimes have a little tear yeah. out of your head, sure. raise a hand, right. Amen. Amen. Yep. Yeah. You're right. Respond verbally, and, mm -hmm. and you, you can't find yourself in the hall to respond visibly. That's right. And allow the word of God. You know, Bible. So these these Maria were more honorable than those of Thessalonica that they searched the scriptures daily where those things are so. No doubt about it, Paul preached and they're, and they're saying, and, and they're making search in the Bible. But I think it goes beyond that. I think sure. they knew Paul was preaching the Bible. I think they were searching the scripture to see if those things were so in their yeah, life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he preached truth. Is, is this seen in my life? I was I'm gonna find the Bible how I can apply this to my life. Oh yeah. Yeah. To respond verbally and visibly. Aren't you glad you got a man of God that's ready? Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, when you gather together Sunday. You gonna be ready? That's good. Are you ready for church? <laughs> Father, thank you for the night you've given to us. Thank you for your Bible. What a book. What a book. What a book. I know I'll say that a lot. I don't know what else to say. Just what a book. It sure convicts my heart. It feeds my soul. And dear God, the success of our churches is dependent upon the man of God having a message from God and being ready and dependent upon the people of God being ready to respond to truth. Not amen in the preacher, but amen in truth. Respond to the truth, both verbally and visibly. And it'll make a difference. It'll make it'll cause growth amongst your people. It'll make an impact on the next generation. It, it'll magnify your son. It'll encourage the man of God. Oh, they're getting this. Man, he wants to prepare a better meal next time. It'll convince lost people when they come in. Oh, how many times have lost come in and left the same way? How many times have people with marital needs have come in and didn't get help? Because we weren't all ready for church. Oh, dear God, help us to be ready. Not just to be glad that the man of God is ready, but as we sit in the pew that we be ready for church. To respond to the truth that goes forth. Allow the truth. You blessed tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. As we